I'll be inside in a minute. I'm gonna say hey to Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, Mike. Flower beds are looking good, neighbor. Yep. You guys just get back from church? Ah. Yeah, yeah, I just been at the church house. I wonder why he never invites me to church. I mean, I'd go if he asked me to go. But this is the way it is. I'm out in my front yard when he comes home from church. It's always so awkward. It's so awkward. And I'm so hungry. Ugh. I think my wife made goulash. I love goulash. Oh, maybe Joe would like some goulash for lunch. Hey, Joe. Here comes the invitation to church. Yeah? You wanna come over sure, for a Sure, I'd goulash? love to go to church with you. What'd you just say? What'd you just say? No, what? No, what'd you say? What'd no, you what say? You, say? you said something about God. God, God. Goo. 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 Goulash. Goulash? Goulash. It's a... You're having goulash at your church? No. No, at my house. You're having... You're inviting me over for goulash? Yeah. At your... Goulash? Yeah, who doesn't like goulash? I like some goulash. Yeah, sign me up. Goulash! I'll check and make sure we have enough. I see you walking away. I mean, have you been there, right? Wanting to invite someone to church, but just couldn't figure out how to do so, couldn't find the right words to say. We just know this morning that you're not alone. That's not just you, but for the most part, most of us. You see, today we continue in this sermon series, uh, Waiting on the World to Change, where we're looking at four different biblical characters and the way that they changed their immediate world. Well, this morning we have to recognize and we actually have to embrace this crucial aspect of our faith. Yesterday we'll be reminded that one of the greatest impacts that we can actually make in this world and in our community is witnessing to what Jesus has done in our lives and extending an invitation for others to come and see. Today's change agent is Philip and we first turn to John chapter 1 verses 43 through 51. Take a listen. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. <laughs> Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked, Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, <laughs> You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The word of God for us, the people of God, and we say, thanks be to God. This morning we ask ourselves, do I truly appreciate God's grace so much? that it compels me to share it with others. This morning, we see that through Philip's witness. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you and praise you for your Holy Spirit in this place and in our lives. We pray, Lord, that your spirit will remain in a mighty way as your word is given and received. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. It says, the next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. You see, this next day follows the day that Jesus has already called Andrew and Peter and an unnamed disciple. Well, here Jesus continues putting together his dream team, doing so simply by saying to Philip, follow me. 
You see, at this point, Philip doesn't really have a reason to follow Jesus, a reason to say yes. He hasn't seen Jesus before. He hasn't seen any miracles, hasn't heard any of his teachings. There's been no explanation given, no expectations offered. He hasn't told him where following him will lead, where the path leads, where they are going. You see, apparently the sheer presence of Christ and the power of his words draws Philip's in, Philip in and creates a following. It creates a disciple. And so Philip responds immediately and appropriately as a disciple. He shares it. It's the very next thing that Philip does. It says he finds Nathanael and tells him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. You see, Philip and each disciple, they actually see something different in Jesus. And each one shares it in their own way. Yes, each disciple follows Jesus with a differing expectation, with differing needs. Already in the Gospel of John, he's been uh, named the Lamb of God, the, the Son of God, Rabbi, Messiah, the one Moses and the prophets wrote about. Yes, each one needed something different. One needed a teacher. One needed the Messiah. One needed the fulfillment of Scripture. And each need was met. Yes, each one found a reason to follow Jesus. Well, what about you this morning? You see, I have this poster in my office. It's in my office. It's not hanging up because I haven't found time to hang things on the wall yet. But it says, and he shall be called. And then it proceeds to list different titles, different names given to Jesus throughout Scripture. It's like our sermon series back in August when we talked about the different ways, the metaphors in which we envision our Lord. And so we see titles like the Good Shepherd, the Chief Cornerstone, the Advocate, the Anchor, the Living Water, the Way, the Truth, and the Life. What need do you need met? this morning. You see, Jesus has a way of meeting our needs whenever we follow him. And here in the text, the word that translates into follow is ekolutheo, and it means to accompany as a follower, to go along with, but it also means to be a disciple. And so here it should be taken literally and figuratively. Literally meaning that Philip is going to walk with Christ, he's going to follow him, and then figuratively He is going to walk in this life of discipleship. And so, yes, Philip follows him in the moment, but not just initially, continually. Every day choosing to wake up and to follow Christ. How about you? How are you continually following Jesus on a daily basis? How are you going deeper? How are you growing fuller? Well, of course, the way that we do that is through the means of grace, right? through those works of piety, the way that we grow in our love for God, growing in our personal holiness, worshiping, connecting with other Christians, growing in our understanding of Scripture, and then also the works of mercy, serving in the kingdom of God, committing to generosity, but also sharing our faith. Works of mercy includes sharing our faith. Yes, as we see with Philip, a part of following Christ is sharing Christ. Yes, sharing what Uh, we have found in Jesus, what we have found in Christ is actually intrinsic to being a disciple. I myself become a disciple, and then I point others to the way as well. Philip found Nathanael and told him, Nazareth, could anything good come from Nazareth? Nathanael asked. Come and see. Come and see, said Philip. You see, I love this response, right? He doesn't really answer him. He doesn't give a a full theological explanation. Instead, he invites Nathaniel on the journey of faith. Yes, to come and see and to answer his own question himself. To come and see and to experience truth for himself. To come and see and to behold this Nazarene himself. Yes, Philip's invitation begins to change Nathaniel's whole world. I mean, you ever receive an invitation, right? Maybe to a homecoming or or to prom, a wedding, maybe to even get married yourself, a class reunion, a barbecue or a pool party, 
Super Bowl party, Halloween party. Yes, you remember how it felt to, re, to, to receive an invitation to be included. Well, more so, do you remember receiving that invitation? Do you remember how it felt to be invited to come and see? Yes, to come and see that the good shepherd is the one that calls, leads, and protects. To come and see that the chief cornerstone is your solid foundation. To come and see that the advocate supports you through intercession. Yes, do you remember being invited to come and see that the anchor holds you through the storms of life? To come and see that the living water, as we just heard last month, is the one that quenches your soul? Do you remember being invited to come and see the way to follow, the truth to believe in, and the life to live? Do you remember how it felt? Well, as you do, we also have to remember, we have to recognize how people may or may not respond. Yes, we never know how people may respond to such an invitation. They could be skeptical, right? Amen? I mean, here Nathaniel says, can anything good come from there? You see, despite whatever picture we paint, whatever image we we envision, whatever name or title we give Christ, Jesus Christ is Lord and King of all. Sadly, most of the world has missed the boat. You see, just early in this, in this chapter, chapter 1 of John, he says, He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. You see, that age-old universal question that Jesus eventually asked the disciples still remains. Who do you say that I am? Well, Lord, uh, some say that you are John the Baptist. Some say that you are Elijah, and others say you are a prophet. You see, somehow or some reason, that's how some of the world still responds. Some say Jesus was a good person. Some say Jesus was a great philosopher or teacher, which is really a, what we call a low Christology, a low understanding of who Jesus is, Christology being the study of Christ. There's some that have a low Christology while others simply disregard, they disbelieve the entire story. Yes, they doubt that anything good could come from there. From here, the church, they doubt that anything good can come from the church. You see, the world, and when I say world, I mean your neighbors and coworkers and family and friends, the world may be skeptical, but an invitation may also spark curiosity. Nazareth, can anything good come from Nazareth? You see, here Nathaniel's actually asking an honest question. He's asking an honest question. I mean, how could the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the promised Messiah come from Nazareth? We're talking about a a small village, not even a city, about 500 people. It was isolated away from any major trading route or activity. And it's not even mentioned in the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament. It's how in the world could the King of the world come from Nazareth? So why does Nathaniel go and see? Well, perhaps his relationship with, perhaps his respect for Philip compelled him. I mean, you ever look at the reviews before making a purchase, right? Maybe the uh, reviews on a car, um, the house or the surrounding neighborhood, a restaurant, a movie or book or music. Uh, Carol and I listened to um, some hip-hop artists, Christian artists from, uh, from Reach Records, And so I was recently getting ready to buy one of their albums, um, but before I did, I just read through some of the reviews. Four star, five star, five star, four star. Well, you see, anytime you read a review, right, um, their words, their, their perspective, their assessment becomes a witness. Well, here, when I'm looking at the reviews, there's more credibility with the ones that you can tell have listened to. They have followed this, this particular genre. They have followed this particular artist for a long time. They end up having a more, or have a more, they're more credible in their review. Those that have actually listened and followed for a long time. It's the same with us. It's the same with you. You see, the way we follow, how we follow, how we act as Christians and disciples becomes our faith review. Oh, that's why they are so nice and respectful, because they 
believe in this Jesus. You see, perhaps Philip has some credibility. And so his invitation and his credibility with Nathaniel begins to change Nathaniel's world as the Holy Spirit works. You see, we never know how the Spirit is moving and working in our lives. Last week after worship, I was greeting some of you after worship, and some of you, or one of you here this morning, you actually introduced me to someone. You see, this person invited them to worship, and it was on a Sunday, this person actually happens to be from Cuba, this was on a Sunday where we were lifting up World Communion Sunday, we were lifting up diversity, and then Pastor Esther lifted up her story about being from Cuba. And now this person is going to invite them to our Esau program. You see, you never know how the Holy Spirit is working and is going to work and move when you invite someone into the faith. You see, Philip has learned that. Philip has learned that. You see, Philip has continued following Christ throughout Jesus' life and ministry and then beyond that. He continued sharing Christ after his resurrection and after his ascension. But now, instead of walking with a literal Jesus, he is walking with the Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and following his, her lead. Now, an angel, it says, this is in um, chapter 8 of the book of Acts. We've seen Philip continue to work. It says, now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandake. This man had gone down to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Go to that chariot and stay near it. You see here, we see that Philip has been attentive to the spirit. And I want to show you the definition of attend. Five ways. One, is to be present with, to accompany the Spirit. Two, to be ready for a service, as in ministers who attend to the King. Three, we're talking about uh, to pay attention, right? To attend to spiritual things. The Spirit's leading all around us, all right? So once we do that, once Philip here in the story is told by the Spirit, is led by the Spirit, and empowered by the Spirit, he has to do number four to direct one's attention, to attend to, to deal with the work himself. Now that the Spirit has called him to go do it, he has to apply himself. He has to attend to the work. And as definition number five says, to apply oneself. He has to attend to the work. He's been told where to go, but now he has to apply himself. He has to attend to the work. One of the things that Carol and I uh, liked about the listing of our, our new home and the, the reviews of the surrounding neighborhood was that it was on a loop and doesn't have uh, any through traffic. Very different from our last house that even though it was uh, no outlet, it still had a lot of neighborhoods in our, in, our, in our neighborhood. And so we were one of the first houses and so we had a lot of traffic. We were also on a hill and our driveway was on a hill. So it w- wasn't really conducive to us playing in the front yard, playing basketball with the boys riding their bikes. So as soon as we moved here, we were like, yes, no through traffic, and it's flat. And so one of the things that we did to help with the transition with the boys, we bought them new bikes because they had outgrown their old ones anyways. So they come, they're excited, they want to ride their bikes immediately. Gavin, he's off to the races. Well, Isaiah still had his training wheels, and so we went out there, he and I were working, and I, um, heighten the training wheels. I say, okay, buddy, we're going to do this. And he was a little nervous. I was like, no, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to trust me. And I, after five or 10 minutes, I was like, let's just skip this whole step. Took the training wheels off. He was nervous. He was apprehensive. He was hesitant. But I reiterated, trust me, buddy. I'm not going to let you fall. I'm going to hold on to you. I'm going to be right beside you. You can do this. All you have to do is keep working. Apply yourself. You can do it. So we worked about 5, 10, 15 minutes, and then he said, Dad, I, I just want to, can I put the training wheels back on? Buddy, trust me, you're doing great, and once you have these training wheels off and you don't need them, you're going to be free. You're going to enjoy riding a bike so much more. Just keep working, apply yourself. Well, after a few minutes, I had to heed my own words. 
He had me from a brisk walk to a slow jog. Next thing you know, I'm full sprints up and down the street. I was like, buddy, you, you're doing great. It's about time for you to take a water break, right? <laughs> After another 10, 15 minutes, he had it. He had practiced with the training wheels, but he didn't need them anymore because he kept working and he kept applying himself. You see, he had to apply himself, right? He had to attend to the work. It's the same with us. To invite others, we have to apply ourselves, and maybe that means at first we have to practice with training wheels. But the more we practice, the more we understand how the Spirit leads us, that the Spirit is right beside us, that the Spirit is walking with us, empowering us, encouraging us, and soon we don't need the training wheels anymore. You see, Philip, he's been working, he's been practicing, he's ready for moments like this. It says, Philip ran to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. You see, the more we pay attention to the Spirit's leading and offer ourselves as servants and apply ourselves to the work, it means we are intentional about sharing the love and the truth of God. Amen? Philip was intentional. You see, intent means to have in mind as a purpose, a goal, or a plan. And it also means to proceed on, to proceed on as in a course or the way of Christ. And so as we proceed on this path of discipleship, this life of faith, this journey, it means that we will be intentional to have the plan, the goal, the purpose of inviting others to join us on this path. Well, how do we do that? How do we do that? How do we be intentional about inviting? Well, I want to quickly give you five practical steps in inviting. The first is pray for guidance. You see, we have to pray for God to uh, help us identify the right person in the right and appropriate time. We can also pray for inspiration and eloquence and articulation so that we can offer the best invitation possible. Then we have to make a decision. Step two is we have to decide who. Who are we going to invite? Family or friends, coworkers, classmates or neighbors? We have to decide when. Are we going to invite them to worship? Maybe a special service, Easter or Christmas Eve. Maybe a church event, a special musical or sports ministry. Or even a serving opportunity. Or like a family, church family event like this Saturday with Trunk or Treat. Or Wednesday, October 30th, our fall festival. And then you have to be specific. You have to decide when. Instead of saying, hey, do you want to come to church with me sometime? Hey, would you like to um, attend uh, church with me next Sunday, October 20th? I would love to go with you to the 9 o'clock or the 11 o'clock service. Number three, you have to recognize life changes and recognize the fact that the presence of God and our faith in God helps bring people comfort in different times of loss and significant change, whether that's the loss of a loved one, a major illness, family issues, a recent divorce, maybe a recent relocation, a new job or school, a recent marriage or the birth of a child or the adoption of a child. Remember, Jesus can meet each and every need. And so after that, after we've prayed, after we've made decision, and after we've recognized potential life changes, we have to extend the invitation politely, respectfully extend the invitation. So, Jack and Jill, I see that you have finally come down uh, from the hills, the mountains of Montana, and we would love to invite you to our church, Pasadena, next Sunday. Or, Tom and Jerry, we see that uh, you have some kids and uh, they want to meet some new friends. We'd love to invite you to our trunk retreat this Saturday at 5 o'clock. Would you come with us? Right? Right? If they say no... That's okay. That's the step five. Accept their answer. If they say no, that's okay. You continue showing credibility, right? Your love, your care, your support, and your respect for them. And you simply say, that's okay. I respect your decision. Just know that if you ever change your mind, I'd love to 
take you up or you can take me up on that offer at any point. And if you simply, it's just not good timing, you can ask them, do you mind if I ask you in the future? Be patient and you never know if they may say yes at some point. If they do say yes, go with them, sit with them, worship with them, and if they're open to it, introduce them to others afterwards. Maybe even take them to lunch afterwards and explain a little further how Jesus has impacted you. Explain some of the ministries of Pasadena. And if they have questions about faith that you don't know, simply say, I don't know, but then I can help you, I can help point you in the right direction. But you see, they can't say yes if you don't ask them. They can't say yes if you don't ask them, and they may never know the truth if you don't tell them. I've shared that one of the things that we've helped instill in the boys is a life of prayer, but this isn't one thing that we've instilled. We haven't told them to be purposeful about sharing their faith. But the Holy Spirit has continued to work anyways. You see, since they were little and still to this day, just a couple days ago, any time that we are in a drive through um, picking up some food, they ask us at the windows to roll down their window and at the first person where we pay and then the second person where we receive our food, before we drive off, they both yell, thank you, Jesus loves you, have a nice day. Thank you, Jesus loves you, have a nice day. And that's typically how people respond with just a little chuckle and a smile. I never know if they really leave that day and their minds change or what they're thinking or how they're feeling, but we don't know if we don't tell them. I mean, think back to the Skit Guys video. You never know if your neighbors, your coworkers are simply waiting. You see, someone is waiting. Someone is waiting because they know you because of your credibility. Someone is waiting because they've seen that Jesus has met your needs and they need their needs met as well. Yes, someone is waiting for you to change their world. People need to hear about Jesus. People need to hear about Jesus. And they say, statistically, for every 10 that we invite, four will come, two will stay. Let's make it simpler. For every five you invite, two will come, one will stay. You see, the eunuch was one of those ones. He became baptized, and then it says he, were, he went away rejoicing on his way. At some point, maybe you were one of those five. I was one of those five. 1997, going into my sophomore year of high school, one of my best friends, Sherelle, invited me to First United Methodist Church to the youth group and invited me to the Warren Willis Youth Camp. I haven't missed a week of camp since 1997, and that was the first time I had ever gone to a United Methodist Church. But it's because of the ministry of the church that I not only became, became a United Methodist, I became one of your pastors. You never know how a simple invitation could change someone's entire world. Again, are you following Jesus daily? Are you pointing others to the way? And is there someone, someone you know whose world you can change? Amen.